Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video. Today's video is actually part of a blog hop. This is the new uh, Bella Roma Hybrid Tea Rose from Altenew. It's a layering stamp set. Uh, also has these matching dyes that come with it. In addition to that, I'm going to be using a Walk in the Woods and um, the Floral Frame uh, stamps and dyes. So this is, <laughs> I'm doing a slimline card because I can't stop myself. Oh, let's talk about the gold. So here I have some gold mirror paper. I have two different gold inks by Altenew. It matched the antique gold a little bit better, so that's the one I'm going to be using. And then I have some chocolate brown cardstock. Um, this is from, I believe this one's from Simon Says Stamp. I originally thought I was going to do one inch, and then I realized that maybe that wasn't enough, so I cut a two inch strip. And then I'm going to stamp my background on this. I find with the larger stamps, it's easier to just lay it flat and then put my paper on top of it. In order to make sure everything is completely covered, I'm going to draw a line where the stamp set ends. Uh, originally, I was just going to freehand it, but decided that it would probably be better off just using my T-square ruler. I'm going to ink this up. And unfortunately, for some reason, I could not hang on to this ink pad. Like I kept dropping it. I'm not really sure why. Um, but anyway, this video is going up on February 1st, which is the day of the blog hop. I think you have until the 9th to enter um, to win. They're giving away uh, gift cards. Um, so I will link that below. I will link my blog below for you to check that out. And then, of course, everybody else's inspiration because they have a ton of amazing people on this blog hop. So I'm going to put a scrap piece of paper over that, hold it still with one hand, and then press with the other to make sure that I get a good impression. And then once that's done, um, I'm going to flip my cardstock over and then do just the same thing again. So this is a little bit of a longer video, even though it only is one card, there's lots of coloring going on. And as we all know, coloring takes a hot minute. Um, so there'll be plenty of time for story time. Aren't you excited? I'm excited. <laughs> I'm actually a little bit rushed and the reason I'm a little bit rushed is because I need to go pick up peanut from school um, but I was having to deal with the bank and the lady kept me on the phone for 1 million years while she typed this email which I am very grateful for her help so I didn't want to rush her along but also was like I have to go pick up my child from school and I have things I have to do before that so do I need to sit here and listen to you type this email but apparently I did and we made it through but now I'm slightly rushed. So here you can see they almost match up, not quite perfectly. I'm okay with it. I don't think at the end of the day you're really going to be able to tell on the card. And then I'm going to go ahead and stamp three of these uh, flowers. I'm using Ocean Waves as my base. And this is the base of the stamp layering for the rose. Um, I tried, oh my people, I tried. I tried using it like traditional stamp layering. Um... I just couldn't, I just couldn't make it go. Um, and it's really because I have, I'm not good at picking the color. I'm just not. So that they are contrasting enough and don't melt into each other, but aren't so contrasting that it looks ridiculous. Um, I tried. I tried a bunch of different color combinations. I didn't like any of them. So here we are. The packaging on this particular rose is blue. And that just kind of stuck with me like I couldn't shake it and that's okay like sometimes you just got to go you just got to go with it so once those were all stamped down I did go back in with the outline layer in black I'm stamping an alcohol safe uh, ink because I'm going to be using the Ultra new artist markers to add some depth and some layers of color here and these did line up really easy um, this part I had no problem with but probably because I wasn't trying to mix any colors you know what I'm saying so it's going to stamp those down and then I'm going to do the same thing for the leaves. For the leaves, I think I forgot to actually show you what color I used. Um, I used frayed leaf and then did the same thing with the outline, stamped them in black. So I actually had to stop my voiceover um, because I had to clear my throat. And you know why I had to do that? Because I'm running late. That's why. That's why I had to do it. <laughs> um, and then in addition to these leaves that I'm stamping here, I am also going to stamp the longer branches from the floral frame set. Those ones, is it's not a stamp layering set, so I didn't stamp it in any color. I just stamped it in black and then uh, colored it accordingly. 
Uh, but they all do have dies, and I am going to be using all of their matching dies. So, story time. As most of you know, I have launched my husband and I, and I'm going to say I have launched because he holds me entirely responsible for, <laughs> for the fact that we have no free time anymore, into this furniture refinishing business. And originally, I really didn't think there was a market for it. And so I had put out onto like some local Facebook groups and just said, you know, hey, is anybody interested in refinishing some pieces they already have in their home, just kind of giving them new life or making them more modern. And I was really surprised by the amount of people that there were. And one of them was this wonderful lady named Suzanne. And she had inherited her uncle's table. And one of the spindles was super loose. And then one of the chair legs was busted, like the dowel portion of it had busted off inside the chair leg. And it was it had water damage on top and it was like a pretty red um, stain and she was not a fan. And her whole aesthetic in her kind of like Eden kitchen um, that touches into her living room is kind of like a black and white vibe, like black, white, grays. And so this obviously did not match her decor and she wanted to redo it. But the tabletop is a like a checkerboard pattern. We'll come back to this. So here I have all of my images stamped out. Alta New Ink is not alcohol safe, which means when you touch an alcohol marker to it, it reacts to the ink. This does not, this is not a bad thing. Like it is if you have a black outline, but it's not if you are trying to incorporate the color. So you'll see I have three markers, but that's because my base layer of ink is going to act as my fourth color. I'm going to go around and just add in shading where the petals meet each other and where one is laying on top of the other. You'll see in the beginning, I do not stretch my color out, especially not with my darker colors, um, because I'm trying to maintain that highlight because that's what's going to give my flower any sort of depth is having the dark shadowed areas and then the highlight lighter colors. So I want to be real careful to make sure that I maintain a highlight even on the areas where the petals are super tight. So we're going to do this. I go lightest to darkest and then darkest back out to lightest. If there's anything to note along the way, I will make mention of it. You know how we jump back and forth. So it's a checkerboard pattern on the top of this table. Typically, when you're refinishing anything that's wood, any sanding, any staining, any top coat, that you do, you want to go with the grain of the wood. So a checkerboard pattern does make it a little bit challenging. Would it be easier if we had a sprayer? Yes, it would be, um, because then you wouldn't have to worry about any brush strokes whatsoever, but it's not our situation. So we agree to redo this table knowing full well that it's going to be very, very challenging. So we go get it, and then first things first, we have to fix the things um, that need to be fixed, anything that needs to be glued. So we had to find the right dowel rod and then find the right angle to put it in at so that this chair still sat flush, which is really more Eric's kind of thing. And I just, um, you know, am his assistant as he needs. Um, so we did that. We get everything sanded. The sanding is very challenging since we're staining the entire set. All of the finish needs to be removed and that like in the spindles, um, means that you have to be able to get in between them. Uh, Eric's parents actually bought us these sanding twigs for Christmas, like they were a stocking stuffer. And they're just like super thin um, sheets of, well, I mean, they've been cut down. So they're really thin sheets of sanding paper that have like a hard plastic or a hard foam in between them that make them stiff enough for you still to be able to use them. Um, and those were amazing. Like, I, yes, we'll buy those again. We'll buy those again. So good. Um, I wish that I had a Dremel that I could use, but the Dremel that we have is not, like, even though it's a multi-speed, even the lowest speed um, just, like, tears up the wood. So I have been watching several other YouTube Instagrammers, what have you, that are using Dremels, but I cannot get any of them to answer my question about what kind of Dremel they are using. So that is what it is. Um, 
But so we finally get everything sanded. We put stain on the top of the table and it's pretty uneven. Um, oh, I had to bleach it. I forgot about that. So go back. After it was sanded, I had to bleach it because with the water damage, some of the red from the stain actually like leached into the wood. So I had to paint the whole thing with bleach. And then that did remove the vast majority of it. There was one spot that still had some red in it, but we were taking it from this reddish color to a cool um, gray that the color was actually called carbon gray. And so um, I was pretty sure that it would cover it up. We did like a test strip to see. And uh, so we put the stain on it and the first layer of stain does not look great. It looks pretty uneven. So I'm like, okay, now that's that's number one. Okay, we put the stain on it once, right? One time. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to sand it by hand, sand each one of these individual, because we were using a multi-orbital uh, sander, which is multi-directional. And um, so I was like, well, I'm gonna sand it by hand. I'll sand each one of the squares and then go from there. So we did that. It did look more even, but it's still like the stain wasn't sitting the same where the squares met. And that's simply because I just couldn't get close enough to the edge. Like I couldn't get right up on it without going across the grain for the next square. Know what I'm saying? So I end up like going in with a paintbrush and the stain to kind of match everything together, get it looking like, okay, it's good. The color matches the chairs. We're good to go. We top coat it. And after we top coat it, I'm going to be honest, I wasn't like, I love this. But it's because I had to pick a direction for which way I was going to go to brush on the top coat because it was not reasonable to put top coat on each individual square in each individual direction. So the leaf is solid. The leaf is not any checkerboard at all. So we decided we're going to go with the direction of the leaf because when we went and picked it up from them, they had it set up with the leaf. So their intention is to leave the leaf in it. So that's the direction that we decided we were going to add the top coat. So we did that and we're all good. We bring it into the house. I take my photos and then we're getting ready to load it up to leave. Taking the chairs out, taking the, uh, it's a pedestal table. So it's got two pedestals it sits on. Taking those out. And then Eric takes the table out and is loading it into the truck bed. And he's got like a blanket on the side of the truck to lean it up against, you know, because you got to protect it, right? And as he is loading it into the truck bed, it catches the corner of, I think it's like the metal portion for where the tanu cover is and scratches the top of the table. So what are you going to do, right? I mean, what are you going to do? It is what it is. So we pull it back out. I talk to her and let her know, hey, today's not going to be the day. We're going to have to refinish it. So I try, oh, wait, we got to go back to the card. So with the card, I just thought that the rose would look more dynamic if it had a couple of different colors. So I really liked the, I think it's the B802. Um, and then I kept kind of playing around with different pinks and purples to see um, if I liked the way that they looked. And I really didn't find one I liked until I got to the R801. Like it was, it, the other colors just weren't strong enough to make an impression. So I did that and then um, I brought in another purple, I think, which was R702. And then I'm just going to go, the, petal, the petals I am picking are totally at random, guys. So you can put as much or as little as you want. I just think it makes them look more interesting to have um, different colors in there. So with a blue, I went purple and green, which, and a little bit of pink, but whatever color you use, you want to make sure it's going to be something that goes with it. So if you do a red rose, you could add uh, yellows, you could add purples, you could add pinks. If you do a yellow rose, you could add pinks, you could add oranges, um, you could maybe even add a little bit of red, but it'd have to be a very pale color. But you see what I'm saying. Like, you can't go in there, like with blue, I couldn't go in there with orange, because it will turn to brown and it will be hideous. Um, so, there's that. So, once I was done with that, I like to outline all of my images. It's not necessary, that's just me. 
So I outlined the whole thing in black and then I added in some white highlights with um, a gel pen. Like nothing too crazy. It's not even really that solid. Uh, just kind of like some sketchy lines. Um, so anywho, we're, we've scratched the tabletop now. So we pull it back out. I sand it to get the scratch out. And then I'm like, we're going to have to strip this whole thing. And Eric's like, are we though? And I was like, I can try to see if I can like blend the stain in, but you're talking about layers of top coat and the stain. And so I tried it. It looked like trash. So I come upstairs and I'm like, we got to strip the whole thing. And he was like, do we? And I was like, go downstairs and look at it. So he goes downstairs and looks at it and he was like, we got to strip the whole thing. I was like, yes, we do. So he was also at the same time building a workbench for his dad. So I was like, you work on the workbench, I'll work on the table. So I put the stripper on, I wait my 30 minutes, I scrape it off. And not everything has come off because, you know, we've top coated the daylights out of this thing. And then uh, I put the stripper on a second time, I scrape it off. And now, um, like, then you have to go through and you have to wash it to um, basically make sure that the stain isn't working anymore um, and then let that dry. So then the next day, I go out there and sand it. We gotta talk about the card. So here, I the leaves that are, well, any rose leaf really is, um, they always have like the, the I don't wanna say the frayed edges, like the pointy edges. And I really just wanted to accentuate those and give these leaves some life. So you'll see that I am drawing little lines from the indents on the outside. If you're not confident doing this with a brush nib, the Altenew Artist Markers have a bullet nib on the other side, which is perfect for stuff like this. Um, and here you can see I'm using the bullet nib and, and it works just fine. I am going to go back in with the brush nib because I want my leaves to look consistent, but I just wanted to let you know that that was an option. So I'm basically adding shading from the inside vein out and from the crinkles on the outside edge in. They're not going to connect, like my darkest parts are not going to connect. Um, they're really just going to kind of sit in the middle. It does get a little bit trickier with smaller leaves. Um, but just know like your line doesn't have to be huge. It can be just a teeny tiny line and still have a huge impact. Um, so I'm going to color two of these and then um, I'm going to do the rest of them off camera. So um, I strip it and then I'm on to sanding. So in one day before I have to go to work, now I have to go to work, I have to leave for work at 6.30 at night. So from the time that I get up at 2 2.30 yeah 2.30 to 6.30 I am in the garage with this table so I sand it all down to get everything off you know the 120 120 it all over and then 220 it I do the edge by hand because there was no way to avoid the edges when I was doing the stripper um do all of that and then I put wood conditioner on now wood conditioner is used and it's something that we use all the time and it just helps to even out any dry spots so the wood conditioner absorbs into the dry spots so that your stain goes on more even however we had already wood conditioned this thing so i put the wood conditioner on i put the stain on and it's super even but it's way lighter like way way lighter than it was before and i'm like it's the wood conditioner i shouldn't put the wood conditioner on great so I try, the next day, I try a second coat of stain. And it's slightly darker, but not as dark as it was before. So then I start asking around to people I know, right? Like, what, where am I at here? And a couple of people suggest a couple of different things. And I call the store that sells the brand of stain that I'm using. And I was like, hey, listen, can I just, because carbon gray is like one step below black. So I was like, can I just bump this up to black? and still managed to match these chairs. And the guy was super nice and he was like, you already know the answer to this. I could sell you the black, but you'll just be making another mistake. Sand it down and do it again. You gotta get rid of the wood conditioner. So, oh, back to the card. So for the um, yellow greens here, I decided to just use the same blue that I used for the rose, the same one that I added the color layering with. And that's the B, um, what is it, something 08. 
I'll have them linked below. Um, and so I did that. Oh, it's the 802 because I can see it right now. Um, and I just did that to, again, make it a little bit more dynamic. I'm going to color these particular ones in uh, my teal colors. And then I'm going to add the color layering with the yellow green and with the purple. Why can I use the purple? I can use the purple because this is more blue based versus green based. And purple and teal are really very interesting together. If you have not done it before, I would suggest um, putting them on a card together or maybe layering them over each other and see what you think about it. Um, but again, it has to be a very blue based teal. If you try to do it with a green based teal, it's not going to look so pretty. Um, so he's like, you know what you got to do? Sand it down again. So I do. I sand it down again. I spend the day sanding it down. 120, 220, 320 by hand. No wood conditioner. I put the stain on. And I kid you not, my people, it was the same exact color that it was the last time. It was like I just did all that work for absolutely no reason at all because it was the same color. Literally the same color. So I was like, well, I mean, I, it is what it is at this point. Like, what am I going to do with that? So I put a second coat of stain on it and it's still pretty much the same color. So I'm like, it, it just is like, there's nothing I can do about it. It's close enough for government work. It's not as dark as it was before, but there really isn't anything that I can do to fix my situation. So here I'm just going to go ahead and put my dies all in place, run these through my um, die cutting machine to cut them out, and then I'm going to start building the card. Um, so as luck would have it, the next time my my ex-husband was in, he worked for Sherwin-Williams for years and now currently works for Home Depot. So like he's done this for years and not refinishing furniture, but worked with paint and stain. And so... He came to pick up Peanut while I was putting the second coat of stain on it. And he was like, Kelly, you are wiping off too much stain. And I was like, but I need it to be even. And he was like, I understand that you need it to be even. But I am telling you, if you want the color to be darker, like you're wiping off too much stain. And I was like, oh, okay, well, how do I make it even but not have it be super streaky? So... I ended up, what he told me to do was just wipe from one direction. He was like, pick your direction and then wipe from one direction um, and you won't pick up as much stain as what I was doing, which was kind of like buffing it back and forth until everything was smooth. Um, it was a little bit more streaky, but it was also substantially darker. So I sent Eric a picture and I was like, what do you think? And he was like, I think the darker looks better, even though it is maybe not as even as, uh, you know, you would like it. I don't think it looks bad. So that's what we end up going with. We end up um, the next day I top coat it. Our top coat has a four hour dry time because this time I'm not using a brushable top coat. This time I'm only using wipe on because the brush strokes bothered me so bad the last time. Um, oh, I for I completely forgot the part where the stain moved. Oh my gosh. All right. So back up before I finally got the, the stain on it to work. We were just like accepting that this was what this was. And then Eric put the top coat on it. Now, I personally think, I don't think it's anything he did wrong by any means. I think that the stain wasn't dry, even though we had waited over 24 hours um, I just think that the stain wasn't dry. And so when he went to put on the top coat, it completely moved the stain. Like it just moved it all over, all over. So I had to scrub the table down because there was no top coat on it. It was just stain. But I had to scrub the table down with lacquer thinner and like a soft brushy scrubby thing in order to get all of it off because I was nervous about sanding it again because those inlays are actually a veneer. So once I did that, I scrubbed the whole thing with lacquer thinner to get all of the pigment off. Then I do wipe it down with mineral spirits. Then I'd wait for it to dry and then I could put the stain on again. That's when my ex-husband told me the trick about the wiping. So we put the top coat on and it's just a wipe on top coat because I was, again, not feeling those brush strokes. And... 
So I put it on, wait my four hours, put it on, wait my four hours, put it on. Well, at this point, it's 1 a.m. And we are trying to deliver this table the next day. But I need to have four layers of top coat on there to make sure everything is super protected. So I end up having to set, <laughs> this is dedication, y'all. I end up having to set an alarm for 5.30 in the morning so I can get up, I can sand my top coat to get out any like dust particles or anything that's fallen into it, sand it down with uh, 320, which is just making it smooth. It's not taking anything off really. And then wiping down, like wiping off the dust and then putting on my final layer of top coat while I'm half asleep. Um, that happened. Yeah. But we got to deliver the table and she loved it. So yay, that thing's out of my house. Back to the card. So here I decided that I wanted to pop my flowers up on foam tape and I had just opened a new big roll of scotch foam tape, which is my preferred, but I could not find it because my child played with it. So I ended up just grabbing this foam tape. I'm not going to tell you what the brand is, but I am going to tell you that it's trash. Um, don't use it. Just buy the scotch foam tape. That's the good stuff. Um, and so here I go to move this and with scotch foam tape, I would normally be able to move this with this one. I'm not, I literally rip the, um, the leaf off. Now I can't get it off of the foam tape at all. I was getting very, fr <laughs> I was getting very frustrated. Um, but eventually I was able to kind of get it where I wanted it to be. And even though it doesn't line up with the rest of the leaf underneath it, like I'm not even worried about it because ultimately you couldn't see that portion of it anyway. And I needed it to be a little bit farther over to the right because my design was not even. I was too far to the left and not far enough to the right. You know what I'm saying? So now that I have that there, I'm going to just use my middle one as a placeholder so that I can tuck in the leaves that will go in the middle. And then I'm going to end up putting two layers of foam tape once I find the one that's my scotch foam tape, because that's the one I prefer. And I did find it. It was I, like hidden under the desk. Um, but once I found it, I used two layers of this one to kind of pop them up above the other roses um, and just, you know, kind of set it apart, I guess. And then I did have to kind of finagle it underneath this other rose, but it was no big deal. Um, and then that's pretty much it. Now I declined to put a sentiment on top of it because like these type of cards are really good for all kinds of occasions. And I didn't want to pigeonhole myself into only being able to use it for a certain one. But since, um, you know, it's just a good solid card design. I was like, I'm just going to leave it like this and I'll put a sentiment on it later. So that's it. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. And I will catch you in the next video. Bye.